this year, its 50th anniversary. Darlington Raceway, it doesn't matter if you drive a Ford, Chevy, or Pontiac, or if your name is Gordon, Wallace, Jarrett, or Labonte. She'll bite you at any moment. Down through the years, her promoting corners have claimed the best of drivers. The Darlington Strife is waiting for its next victim today in the Trans South Financial 400 next. Super Speedway, Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. It's the NASCAR Winston Cup Trans South Financial 400. It's the fifth race of the 98 season, and coming into this event, Rusty Wallace has a 49-point advantage on his teammate, Jeremy Mayfield, with the defending series champion, Jeff Gordon, in seventh place in the point standings. Here's how they will start today, and notice the top five have major hurdles to overcome. Terry Labonte starting 33rd, while Rusty is in the middle of the pack at a track which is always a nemesis. Alone. Now he shares his past and his passion with the future. Clearing high hurdles with grace and speed requires a perfect stride, especially if you hope to win a championship. With skilled leadership and expert coaching, the intense athlete can see his goal. But sometimes, even the smooth will stumble, and the result can be much more costly than just a single step. It can ruin your day and leave you limping and alone on the desolate track to the Winston Cup Championship. Maybe Rusty Wallace hasn't lost all his races here at Darlington, but he's never won 0 for 28. In fact, in the last 12 starts here, he has just two top five finishes. But all those hurdles are history for Rusty. This season, his stride has been nearly perfect, clearing, clearing the first four hurdles, even his highest one at Daytona. Today, he faces perhaps his toughest. He's the only driver that has finished in the top five every race this season. In fact, Rusty has finished fifth, fourth, third, and second. Guess what hurdle is next? We to reflect on special memories and milestones that we could possibly see both a first and a last take place today within the same family. With the impending sale of his team, no doubt, this will be Darrell Waltrip's final run as a Winston Cup car owner. However, bolstered by a seventh place qualifying run and an impressive performance in yesterday's happy hour, many believe that today, Michael Waltrip in his 367th start could get his first Winston Cup points win here today. If the scenarios do unfold, this day will be magical. This day will be memorable. And for the millions watching at home, it will be truly emotional. Times during the race that Jeff's car wasn't working very well, but the crew worked and worked on it. They finally got it technically balanced, Ned. And that's what you need to win races. Now, NASCAR works very hard towards trying to get the downforce balance on these cars. Everyone knows that they took cars to the wind tunnel after the Atlanta race and then made a rules change after that. So supposedly the downforce is pretty well equal on these cars. But they can't legislate the mechanical end of things, Benny, and that's the important thing on race day. That's right. Now, who's going to win the race day? The team that gets the best mechanical balance. And that's springs, shocks, sway bars, and air pressure in the tires. I talked to some of the teams, and they tell me that if you take one pound of air out of the right front, all of a sudden, the car will become loose. If you add one pound of air to the right front, the car will push. That's how close these cars to being balanced mechanically. But the other thing that drivers have to worry about, even if they find that right balance, is the track at close to the start of the engines and the green flag. But let's go pit side to Jerry Punch. It is an all Jack Roush front row. Mark Martin on the pole and uh, Mark's teammate Jeff Burton on the outside of row one. Frankie Stoddard here trying to get uh, Jeff all buckled in. Jeffrey, last time you were here in this car, you bumped and rubbed but finished second to Jeff Gordon in September. Can you improve on that today? Well, we may have to bump and rub a little harder, I guess. Uh, that was a great run for us. Uh, we're looking to improve on it, darling. It's one of our favorite racetracks, and uh, the XI team needs a good, con consistent finish, though, today. That's what, that's what we're shooting for. All right, Jeff Burton outside of row one, looking for a possible good shot at maybe getting his first win here today. Let's go back upstairs. Getting set for the command to start engines here as the 43 drivers are in their cars getting set to go 293 laps around this 1.3 mile racetrack that make up the Trans South Financial 400. There you see Terry right, Labonte. Ladies and gentlemen, with the most exciting words in the world of motorsports, our Grand Marshal, four time Super Bowl winner, Terry Bradshaw. All right, let's have a great day, gentlemen. Start your engines!
set for the Trans South Financial 400. Terry Labonte starting back in the 33rd. Do these overhead shots. Somewhere up there in the beautiful blue skies flying the Pennzoil Copter Cam. We'll go 293 laps here today. Dale Earnhardt has the track record. They'll go 48 to 58 laps before they have to change tires, we think, at this point. And the purse is a little over $1.7 million. That's a right progressive zone that should be able to run a little bit longer on the tires. There's a track description. This is 1.366 miles in length. Front stretch, back stretch, same length. Corners are a little different. One and two is banked 25 degrees. Three and four, 23 degrees. And the straightaway is enough banking for the water to run off. Now here's the Everstart Walmart starting grid on the pole is Mark Martin, his second Darlington pole in his 25th race. And Jeff Burton, he finished fourth and second in the Darlington races last year. Second row, Dale Jarrett, last year's winner, and Dick Trickle. Third row, Kenny Irwin and Bobby Labonte, who has five consecutive top ten finishes here. Starting seventh and eighth, Michael Waldrop and Sterling Marlin, who won this race in 1995. Back in the fifth row is Ward Burton and Kevin LePage. Sixth row, Jeff Bodine and Greg Sachs. In the seventh row, David Green and Rusty Watts. In row eight, Rick Mapp, John Andretti. In row nine, Robert Presley, Ricky Rudd. In row ten, we find Mike Skinner and Ted Musgrave. In row 11 this afternoon, Johnny Benson and Brett Bodine. In row 12, Randy LaJoy, 74, Ricky Craven and Jeff Gordon. Row 13, Jerry Nadu and Kenny Wallace. And in row 14, Dale Earnhardt and Joe Nemechek. Now all drivers from here on back will be pitting on the back stretch. In row 15 is Chad Little and Bill Elliott. Row 16, Derek Coate and Ken Schrader. Row 17, Terry Labonte and Lake Speed. Row 18, Jimmy Spencer and Steve Grissom. Row 19 is Jeremy Mayfield and Bobby Hamilton. Row 20, Ernie Urban and Kyle Petty. Row 21, Todd Bodine and Jeff Green and Daryl Waltrip bringing up the rear. The car had 300 on it during the uh, practice and qualifying, but you can't run a three-digit number for the race, so 17 is on the car again. Here's our onboard cameras. Jerry Nadeau, Nadeau will carry one from the 25th starting position. Randy LaJoy in the Bud car will also be run along with him. Ricky Rudd, the Tide Ride. He will start in the 18th spot. Rusty Wall started 14th. With Greg Sachs will throw an Apple Valley Ford. And Michael Walter Basitko Ford also carrying a camera today. And up ahead, you see that the pace car has pulled off the track. The Circuit City onboard camera with Bobby Labonte. And here is the pole setter, Mark Martin, as he leads them down to the green flag. The Trans South Financial 400 is on. Wants to finish with the car in one piece. Uh -huh. 
Now, if you believe that, I got the point. <laughs> well, of course, that is the goal of every driver is to finish the race in one piece because you aren't going to win if you don't do that. But if it gets down near the end, and here's Mark Martin moving over, letting his teammate Jeff Burton just drive by on the outside. He saw Burton coming, knows that he has a fast race car, so he just moved over and let it go. Jeff may have gotten off to a fast start that in the first three laps he has started to come on now as Ward Burton and Bobby Labonte are side by side for sixth spot. A couple of Pontiacs racing right there. Ward Burton gets the position. That car in front of him is Dick Trickle, the Heilig Meyer Ford. Running in fifth spot. coming off that win at Atlanta. Only two Pontiac wins here at Darlington, and the last time was way back in 1963. Wow. This is Bobby Labonte's car, Rusty Wallace, right behind Sterling Marlin and David Green. Rusty dives to the inside, takes a spot away. He's going to try to get Sterling Marlin as well. This is the battle for 12, but up front we have a battle for the lead as Jeff Burton goes around to Dale Jarrett in turn three. Got yourself a run coming off of turn two. Got a nose up there. Jarrett is back on the day. Go without much of a fight. So just in the first seven laps of this race, we've already had three different leaders. Looking up to Mark Martin's position in third. He stayed right with him. This four forwards have pulled away a little bit. He's in a course also. As we go to the top five, in the order you look at the speeds, you see that the leader on the 159 miles per hour. Position now a battle for second. Jeff Burton is leader. Mark Martin looked to the inside and decided he wouldn't make a move on Daryl Jarrett. So Martin falls back into third spot. Look at that wall there to the left. There's hardly an inch that doesn't have a black mark on it. But from boy, Mark Martin really gets a good run off of turn two. Jarrett's car seems to be pushing a little bit coming off of that corner, and Mark really got a run coming off there. Let's see if he can do it coming off of here. Yes, he does. He moves up there. He's going to take a look. And he's up beside of him. He'll get to have the position going into turn one. Indeed, Mark Martin going to second. Dale Jarrett back to third as Jeff Burton has about a three-quarters of a second lead on Martin. Michael Walter and Bobby Labonte. This is eighth and ninth. Michael has moved around Bobby Labonte. Bobby started in the sixth position. This is looking back from the rear bumper to sit go forward at Bobby Labonte. As he said, that is a ninth place car. Our guys yesterday talking to Michael Walter been happy hour. He sure was confident that his car was going to run well today. His best finish so far in 1998 was the ninth in the Daytona 500. Never won a NASCAR Winston Cup race, has finished second at Pocono back in 1988. Of he did win the Winston at Charlotte a couple of years ago. And boy, look at this, is Mayfield in the 12 car trying to come up through the field. Joe Dimacek in car number 42 also trying to move up through the field. drove in the corner on the apron of the racetrack and made it stick. Wow. That's not how exactly how you want to go in that corner. John Kernan down at the back pits. Back here is where Jeremy Mayfield has been talking to his team. 
they were very dissatisfied with their qualifying effort. They had been very fast in practice on Friday. They qualified, they tried a little something different, and the car skated through turns one and two. They had a problem correcting that, but yesterday at happy hour, they made a few changes to the chassis. They thought that they would have a good day, and right now Jeremy likes the way the car feels. In fact, one of the team members just told me, hey, we're heading to the front. Well, there he is, Jeremy Mayfield already moved up to 29th position after starting back in 37th. Our leader is Jeff Burton, followed by Dale Jarrett. Kenny Irwin is running third, then Mark Martin and Dick Trickle. That's your top five as we have completed 14 of the 293 laps in the France South Financial 400. Jeff Burton leads here at the Trans South Financial 400 after 19 laps. He has about a lead of a one to the third seconds or so. And so far, the first four of 1998, the Fords at least have had a statistical advantage. They have 15 top fives, have led 63% of the laps, while the Chevys have been in the top five three times, the act twice. The Chevrolet has won twice, and the Pontiac has won once, and the Ford has won one time. And that was the guy that won. The Ford that we won right along with him, Mark Martin, won in Las Vegas. Here comes Jeff Ford trying to march his way towards the front in his Chevrolet. That takes over the 16th spot. Jeff started back in 24th. Ted Musgrave there in the 16 car and David Green. Yep. Average finish in this race is a lot worse than it is in the Southern 500, isn't it? He doesn't fare too well in this race, but boy, he does great. In the fall, as a matter of fact, I think he's won about three 500s in a row. He's kept in the 91 car, has fallen back a few positions, started. Jeff has won four of the last five races here at David Green goes to the inside of Kevin LePage. Here comes Bill Elliott. He's throwing a donut on the car. He's gotten close to someone with that McDonald's board. Now this car is driven today by Randy Boy. Ricky Craven out of competition for an undetermined amount of Turn forward to start finish line is Jeff Bodine. Jeff Bodine crashing. Are stopping just short of the start finish line on the 24th lap. And the car comes out for the first time. Heavy damage to the front end of the Ford. He had been moving up through the field, Bob. He'd gotten to, I believe, fifth place or, or at the worst, making a pretty good run. And I don't Well, the window net is down on the car, so okay. Seventh spot. We were told that Jeff was running. We see him taking the air hose. Let's see exactly what happened to Jeff 09 as he came off turn four. He don't aboard and contact as he come off the car. And he's control, go down and smack that inside wall. Hard, hard, yes. From another angle, here he is coming off the outside wall and sliding across the right and hitting that inside wall very hard. Now from Michael Waltrip's perspective and the Sitco onboard camera. Okay, there's Bodine down on the inside. Slips up just a bit, makes contact with Ward Burton and slaps down to the inside. And from Russ Wallace's perspective. Same. Inside the and around he goes down the inside wall. over the on his car and say well, and let's go take a ride that would see all cars as a I would guess that we'll see yeah here they all go a bit road yeah they've run they'll complete five laps when they cross
Zone on track interval will show you how the gap closed up. And we see Jeff Burton, the leader on top, and Jeff Gordon at 31 9, 31 6 each and every lap. Jeff Gordon, and look back here at this 33 4 3 for the leader. That's when he ran in some heavy, heavy traffic and lost about two seconds to Jeff Gordon. Now Jeff's going to go through that same traffic in a little bit as soon as he catches up to him. First five races at Darlington, didn't have a win, didn't have a top five, only one top ten, but in the last five races here at Darlington, wow, a whole different story. Four wins, five top fives, top tens, and a marked improvement for Jeff Gordon here at Darlington. P.W., we saw him, the leader coming up on him. Boy, he has been racing here. They're fighting, they're fighting for third right here. Keith Irwin in the 28 car, and Rusty Wallace in the two car. They got together there a little bit ago, Bob. Yeah, almost wrecked. They're battling for third spot. And C.W. finally goes a lap down, Ned. Well, he fought hard there for about four or five laps and was able to keep Jeff Burton behind him. Now Dale Jarrett goes by. So Darrell Walter running 32nd. 32nd. Yeah. 31 cars now on the lead lap. Davy Green right in front of the leader there in the last car on the lead lap. David Green had a great qualifying run in the Caterpillar Chevrolet. Just not able to sustain it as Jeff Burton dives to the inside. Goes by. Here comes Kenny Irwin and Rusty Wallace as they continue to contest the third spot. This is about almost six seconds behind the leader. We saw Irwin start to wiggle off turn two a moment ago. Time the car's getting a little bit loose. You'd probably be smart, Danny, just to back off and let Rusty go and uh, not, not press the issue too much. He knows he has a good, fast race car, but you don't uh, take chances at this point of the race. Richard Labby took over as crew chief on the Kenny Irwin's car before last week. Let's take a break as 72 laps have been completed here at Darlington. Jeff Burton, your leader. the Trans-South Financial 400 NASCAR Winston Cup race in Darlington. 76 laps have been completed. Jerry Nadeau enters the pits. Had that he, hard. After he made a brush with a turn two wall. Flat side, Jerry Pitts. This flat side. Big look, Darlington strike. Yeah, it doesn't look like he, he did too much damage other than just scrape some paint off. It's long, and we see some smoke coming out the air vent on the right front. That's smoke coming off the brakes, because you do use a lot of brakes here at Darlington. Clear. You're all clear. Uh-oh. 
You see the smoke around that right front? One of the world was, I guess that was the, as the car started moving, the air went in that vent and blew the smoke out of the right front wheel. Here's what happened to Jerry Nidu as we ride along with him. This is going down in turn one. He goes to the corner just fine. Darlington Stripe, your car. I guess the 91 car is also, I don't know what happened to him. Something, something happened. Apparently I he wonder. spun the car, but... Uh, yeah, I believe he might have been trying to come in with uh, a pit okay. stop and maybe he got down on that flat and just uh, spun it around and did a 360. So a couple of incidents here, but no caution. The green remains out. And he's pitting on the front stretch. He's going down the back stretch, so he's losing valuable, valuable time. And see, Jeff Gordon got by Rusty Wallace, has moved into third spot. And Rusty Wallace by Kenny Irwin. We saw that a moment ago. So Irwin is now back to fifth spot. Top five finishes this year have resulted in Rusty Wallace being at the top of the point standing. Dick Trickle also passing by Kenny Irwin. But he has new tires on right. He made a pit stop there a bit ago. And boy, does that make a great difference. With Greg Sachs coming into the pits now. Trickle is two laps down in 30th position. Go ever. Well, Kevin LePage is on pit road. The pit board had been out for about two or three laps when he tried to make it to the pit. He's now making a green flag stop, making a long climb on the right rear tire, make a huge track bar adjustment on the right rear of the car. Now they'll come around and put on four or two more tires on the left side. A great qualifying run for this unsponsored Chevy, but disappointment here in the early laps of the Trans Down 400. Kevin LePage is back out. Indeed, LePage began from the 10th starting position, his best start in a NASCAR Winston Cup race. So Greg Sachs leaving pit road. There he is. The Thornapple Valley car. This is Kel Yarbrough's car. Bill was from nearby Timmonsville, South Carolina. Meanwhile, up front, it's still Jeff Burton showing the way. About a half-second lead, about three-quarters of a second lead now on Dale Jarrett, who won this race here at Darlington a year ago. And Jeff Gordon is now nine, a little over nine seconds behind the leader, so he has gained, he has lost about a second in the last few laps. Yeah, I think we showed the graphic of his move up through there, but we said that he'd have to go some, through some of that same traffic that the leaders had gone through that allowed him to catch up. Bill Elliott comes in, John Turnin tells us what's going on. Elliott comes in for a four-tire change. The wrench goes in. They will drop the track bar to make the chassis adjustment there. Right side's going on. Bill, overall, fairly pleased with the way the car has been running today. Swinging around to the left side. They'll take those tires off. And this is what they want to see. They want to see all their pit stops to come under the green flag. But, oh, no. Apparently, they didn't get some lug nuts tightened. Elliott, they dropped the jack to send him on his way. And the jack was on top of the air hose was the uh, problem there. They couldn't get the gun over, so they did not change that. Now they will change that left front tire. Oh, my goodness. What a problem. What a heartbreaker for Bill Elliott. Boy, that cost him a lot of track position. He's going to go a lap down. If all these leaders make green flag pit stop, what have you, that will cost him probably a lap to the leaders. Tough break for Bill Elliott, who has won five times at this racetrack, twice in this race, and three times he has checkered the Southern 500. His most recent win in this race was back in 1992. Dale Earnhardt comes in for a pit stop. This would be a schedule stop. All of these are scheduled stops now. You see that, see that air hose there? The blue air on, on, hose on Dale Earnhardt's car? As the right front tire changer goes around, He's got to swing that hose out so that the it doesn't get in the way of the car. And evidently, one of one of um, Elliot's guys somehow the front hose got under the car and the jack sat on top of it as he went to change the left side tires. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Sterling Marlin brings his car in. Dick Trickle was one of the first to make pit stops and therefore change tires. And look at his. 
tires. Jeff Burton running 32.60 seconds, average speed 152, a little over that. Dick Trigger running about 31 flat, a second and a half faster than the leader of the race just because of those four fresh tires. More pit stops are occurring on the 87th lap of this race. Here is Todd Bodine in the Tabasco car. Sterling Marlin has made a pit stop in the 40 car. He's rolling out. There's Brett Bodine sitting in the pits. Brett is on, sitting on the front side. Had a good qualifying run. Like Ted Musgrave is slowing up, dropping down off the banking and coming in. He was running in 18th position. Here is Musgrave slowing down as he comes down pit road to his assigned spot. And Jeff Gordon will be coming down pit road as well as we watch Ted Musgrave's Prime Star crew go to work on his car. And here comes Gordon into the pits. He was running in third place. Saw some trouble on the right rear on Musgrave's car. Finally get the car, the tire on, the jack not able to let the car down. They're only able to use two air wrenches, so he's got to come around and take the left side off. Here comes Bobby Labonte. You see Jeff Gordon up there at the top of your screen. He's already stopped and the work going on. Musgrave moves away, and so does Jeff Gordon. And Dale Jarrett will come in the pits. They'll see Jarrett coming into his pits, and while he's stopping for his pit stop, Jeff Gordon will go by on the outside. Jerry Punch. Second pit stop of the day for Dale Jarrett in the Ford Credit Ford car. They will make an air pressure adjustment to try to tighten the car up. They have made a significant air pressure adjustment on this car number 88. Now left side tires going on the car. They get it completely full of fuel. And they will make a long, hard look at the right front and right rear tire. Rusty is in in front of Bill Weber. The Miller Lite Ford is a little loose off the turn. Two pounds of air pressure out of the right rear. The right side tire is already on. The left are going on. The fuel going in. Rusty's down and he's away. Jerry with the 99. They have made an air pressure adjustment on the car number 99, and they will also talk about making possibly a wedge adjustment in the left rear. They decided no, they will not make the adjustment, just the air pressure. They're trying to tighten the car up a little bit, coming off the corner. Let's go back to John Kernan in the Terry Labonte pit. Four tire change for Terry Labonte, only a slight air pressure adjustment. The car had been just a little, done, but it was a good stop for Terry. Back to Bill Weber. Michael Waltrip on the front stretch pits already has right side tires on the Cisco Ford. No chassis adjustment. The left's going in. No problems at this point. The fuel going in. The left going on. Michael Waltrip's going to have to watch traffic when he pulls away. It's very close to Mark Martin. Our pole center, Mark Martin, coming down pit road at 45 miles an hour. His second pit stop coming on lap 91. The crew now scampering over the wall. They will likewise make a slight adjustment in the air pressure to try to get the car a little bit tighter entering the corner. They make a significant wedge adjustment in the right rear, and now the left side tire is going on, trying to make significant adjustment on the Valvoline Ford. Left front, left rear, and they pull the jack, and he is down and away. In 20.3 seconds, we didn't time all the pit stops, of course, but that rusty wall is had a, had a great pit stop, and we saw Jeff Burton, the right rear tire changer, had some trouble on Burton's car as well. This is the onboard camera from Rusty, from Mark Martin, right? As you see him trying to get up to speed, as a lot of others are already there. The leader is Dale Jarrett. There he is. We have had four different leaders today, seven lead changes besides Jared. Of course, Burton, Mark Martin has led three laps, and Bill Elliott has led one circuit. We'll be right back. For Dr. Jerry Punch, greet you from Darlington, South Carolina. Again, 98 laps into this race. The story of the race so far has been those two cars right there. Dale Jarrett and Jeff Burton, they have led the most laps. One caution so far, that was for Jeff Bodine hit the wall. How about tire wear? That was a major consideration when we began this race. Bill Weber has the story. 
So far, so good. These are the tires that came off Rusty Wallace's car on that last pit stop. These numbers show exactly what Rusty said. The car is a little loose. These numbers up here on top, all across these tires, show the tire wear is almost excellent. After 64 laps, it's an old right side tire, but it's a new left side tire that you brought here with an extra 132nd of an inch of tread and also more resistant to tire wear in the compound. Here's Jerry Punch. As Burton takes the lead, let me show you why they are so pleased here in the 99 pit. Everyone's concerned about tire wear. Well, they are praising Goodyear here right now. This is the right rear tire that ran almost 70 laps on the car number 99. I should say 70 very hard laps. These tires began with three and a half, 30 seconds of rubber. After 70 laps, a full fuel stop. They still have one and a half, 30 seconds all the way across. So great tire wear, excellent tire by Goodyear here in Darlington. Let's check in on the Chevy team with John Curtis. And we're seeing the same type of numbers back here on Terry Labonte's tires. You look across these tires, still plenty of rubber tread left on these tires. And they've gone, what, 60, 64 laps. So it looks really, really good. Now, I want to show you this right here. That's not because of a problem with the tire. Whenever Terry was coming in, Ernie Irvin was exiting his pit. Terry had to lock the brakes up, but of course the tire's hot. It scrapes that rubber away. See a little bit of the cord right there. But that was a, a result of, uh, because Terry had to slam on the brakes really hard. I wanted to show it to you because it's a pretty cool video. <laughs> I like it. Picture, yeah. <laughs> Terry Labonte probably didn't like it too good, but there we see Jeff Gordon. He currently is running in third spot. He is. Leading General Motors car, the first two cars the, is the new Ford Taurus. In fact, the same three cars that were battling at the end of the Southern 500 here last year. Gordon won his million. After four races in the 1998 season, Hendrick Motorsports won top five. After four this time last year, they had six top five finishes. Well, they had three in the Daytona 500 last year. Remember when That's they right. ran one, two, three? Yep. That's where they're running at the moment. Terry Labonte fifth, Gordon third, and Randy LaJoy substituting for Ricky Craven in 36. By the way, Terry Labonte made his very first start here at Darlington in Winston Cup competition back in 1978. And finished fourth. Isn't that right? That's I remember great. well. That was a terrific job. Greg Sachs come up and try to challenge Brett Bodine to go by. And that'll be fourth position. They are running 25th and 26th. One lap down. Sachs takes his spot away. And right behind him, David Green also passes Brett Bodine. Jeff Burt just continues to get a little bit farther, a little bit farther away. He's now almost one second in front of Dale Jarrett. Now, is he going to cut his, is his, is his teammate Chad Little going to cut him in his slack? Probably not. Chad's the last car on the lead lap, running 19th place. We'll check the speeds at the line, see how they have increased with the relatively new tires. Steve Grissom there in the car number 41. Then Dog and Jarrett for a number of laps. And well there, the 97 went back by. Here comes the 99, gonna have to go back by again. Looks like Terry Labonte uh, had a good lap. Yes, he did. <laughs> what's going on between Little and Burton? Well, Little is just trying his best to stay on the lead lap. That's what's going on because looking back at Ernie Irving back and wherever he's running, 15th spot at the second fastest speed. Johnny Benson, the top speed that lap in the 26 car. Look at that, 153 mile per hour that time for Jeff Burton because he was racing with the 97 car trying to get by him. Hmm. Probably cost him a good half a second. And that time, Jeff Gordon clearly faster than both those cars because he was in clean racetrack, and those first two cars were in traffic. Now Burton back up to almost 160. 
There's Jeff Gordon, who comes in second fast at the moment. He picked up about a second and a half on the leader since they made their pit stop. some traffic because he was about three miles an hour slower that lap than Dale Jarrett. Yeah, he came up on uh, the 40 car of Sterling Marlin and passed him coming off of turn two. That did cost him a good bit of time. Rusty Wallace, our points leader, is currently in fourth spot. He's 16 seconds behind the leader, Jeff Burton. New tires do make a difference, don't they? Yeah, before he made his pit stop, we saw he was running 32.60 seconds, a little over 152 mile per hour. After the pit stop, four new tires, he was running 30.85 seconds, one and three quarters seconds faster. Jeff Burton has never won here at Darlington. His best finish was second in the Southern 500 last year. We'll be right back. annually produces some of the most exciting moments in the Winston Cup Series. In March 1997, Dale Jarrett would be the man to beat in the Trans South Financial 400. In the final lap, Jarrett found himself locked in a duel with Ted Musgrave, but Jarrett crossed the finish line point one six nine seconds ahead for his second straight victory. This NASCAR Winston Cup Series moment is brought to you by Bu South Financial 400 NASCAR Winston Cup Race. Later today at 4 o'clock Eastern Time over on ABC, it's the Duraloo 200 from Phoenix International Raceway. Jeff Ward has won the pole position for the Pep Boys Indy Racing League event. That's live at 4 o'clock Eastern Time today on ABC Sports. Of course, Tony Stewart and Ari Leindyke and Scott Sharp and others will be there trying to uh, win the last race before the Indianapolis 500 for the IRL. There's Jeff Burton who continues to lead here at Darlington now about a 1.6 second advantage over Dale Jarrett and running back in third spot is the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. Here we see the 20, the 88 car of Dale Jarrett and where's the 24? There he is. Last time by, seven and a half seconds behind. Between Jeff Burton and Jeff Gordon, we see that Gordon was quicker, quicker. And these two laps, the 32.2, the 32.3, those laps that Burton was involved in traffic. And we see that Gordon's able to gain about one second on each of those laps. And here's a pack of cars that got to pick up the pace. And the crews are telling me they got to pick up the pace because the leader is not that far behind them. These are 13th, 14th, the 43 cars in 13th position. The 12th car is in 15th. He just now moved into 14th around Ernie Irvin. But here comes the leader, Jeff Burton, in the 99 car. He is definitely picking up on it. They're about to go a lap down. Right now, there are only 15 cars on the lead lap. And you know, the crew can tell pick up the pace, pick up the pace. But if you're going as fast as you can go, you know, that's as fast as you can go. Try to run faster than your car will allow you to run. And it's so easy. You try to be patient, but in a situation like this, it's so easy to lose that patience. Dick Trickle has come in for a pit stop. Jerry Punch. Well, he is out of sequence of pit stops. They're going to change left side tires. They're planning on putting a half a rubber in the left rear and decided instead to go ahead and make an adjustment on the track bar. Tommy Baldwin getting left side tires on. He is down and away. Let's check in with Bill. Randy LaJoy just made a green flag stop, got four tires, a big gap, he adjusted. They were hoping for a top 10 finish for the Budweiser Chevy today. Even with LaJoy, the new driver in the car, that's not going to happen. As for Jeff Gordon, he continues to march forward on the track and get great stops on pit road. That's how they won a million bucks here last August. His pit times are remarkable. 17.79 on the first one, and then the green flag stop unofficially, 16.29. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's been on the track, but he's a little loose in the middle of the turn, so he's probably going to get better. Wow, salute to the Rainbow Warriors for some great pit stops. And here's some guys on new tires, uh, Randy LaJoy there, and he's going to blow by all these guys. 
They just came out a few laps ago, and look how easy it is. Boy, that race car feels so good right now when you're able just to pull up there and drive right by people that sometimes have been passed here. Ricky Rudd also made a pit stop, by the way, as we go back into the Tabasco Hot Zone for some telemetry from Randy LaJoy. He squeezed out to 126 as he tries to get by Johnny Benson. Accelerate 174, 170, 70 mile per hour. He'll slow going in this corner. And this corner is faster, obviously, than the other corner. You can see that it's about 20 miles per hour, about 15 miles per hour faster than three and four. Got a car of the wall. Ernie Irvin got up and Darlington striped his Skittles Pontiac. Take a look at the right rear. I brought the wall. M4. I'll look at it when you come by. You're clear all around. Some okay. damage there on the right. See the rear bumper covered. Yep. Flapping in the breeze. He's still in 15th position. As he comes off the corner there, we see the damage on the right rear. It's like all sheet metal. That's the leader behind you. It's all sheet metal. Inside. Ernie goes there, 99, clear all around. Feel all right? Here's what happened. As I said, these guys trying to pick up the pace a moment ago and go a little bit faster than the car. And look as he goes to the corner. It gets loose. Dirt tracking in the corner. E go. And the wall kept him from spinning out, Ned. Sure it did. did. I th he did a great job of saving that car and not spinning out. Keeps going. He is a lap down now, but he's still in 15th position. Wow. There's Dale Jarrett right behind him. Ford quality here. Inside. Clear after that 88. Now only 14 cars on the lead lap. John Ed Fred. Uh, it's just right now. It's just wore a right rear out. And they're boring the right rear out. Four will take a round out of the right rear. there in the 28 car is a lap down in 16th. Inside. Clear after that 28. Mark coming inside. Looking inside. Kenny Irwin. On your inside. Drops a lap down, Jerry Punch. Well, Bobby's done running that poorly on the racetrack, but the problem was this. Slugger Labby, the crew chief, said they preached to Kenny about what just happened at Darlington. and he's never been here before. He said, most importantly, when you pit, you jump off the banking and turn four, there are a lot of marbles, a lot of rubber there, and you can spin the car out coming onto pit road. So be very, very careful, be very deliberate. And apparently he was extremely careful. He was so slow getting down pit road, he was almost a lap down when he got back on the racetrack. And of course, the 99 car caught him in back here. Now he indeed one lap down. Let's check in on the Ernie Irvin pit stop over with John Turnan in the backstretch. Well, you've heard Ernie and his crew talk things over after he got up into the wall. The car was Five, loose. It's a left rear tire. Two. Here we go. He, in. Get in he here. will come to a stop. Oh, he slides in really hot. They're going to change all four tires. It looks like they're going to make a chassis adjustment, too. They're going to work on the right side. That looks like a whole lot of damage, just sheet metal damage to that right side. The uh, rear bumper cover just a little bit not to skew. Now, the unless I know there's a problem on the left front. A problem on the left front. Steve, help him out. Help him out, Steve. He's at the front. So they, Grumman went out and came right back. Now they'll put the left front tire on, but this is costing them. Hook him up. Hook him up. Yeah, almost 10 seconds slower than some of the better pit stops that we've seen. Yep. When it rains, pours, doesn't it? I mean, he goes out, he brushes the wall, he comes in, wants, needs a good pit stop, an 18, 17 second stop. He's going to have uh, about two or three cars coming on the outside. And an air wrench breaks. Man. So he drops two laps down now, comes out in 30th spot, and here is Michael. Oh, Christ, down in turn one. Michael Walter of his lap, the caution is going to come out. We have cars up against the wall. And in the middle of the track, and turns one and two. Okay, Keith. Randy LaJoy. Good thing I can't get down there. Are we okay or are we wrecked? We're wrecked. He's driving it back. Trying to knock him enough for overwatch. Sound like there's some contact there. The trickle just can't see. You know, he always runs into people like that in a place yeah. like this. Second time today that that caution is waived. First time was for Jeff Bodine's accident. By the way, Jeff is back on the racetrack. The only car out of the race at the moment is Rick Mast. 
And all these cars are trying to say they're behind, they're in front of the leader. Are they? Well, <laughs> yeah, they, they don't know if the 99 car took the yellow when he came by there a moment ago. Mm -hmm. So they're passing them, they'll let NASCAR straighten it out. Uh, yeah, the lead, uh, Burton was coming off the fourth corner when this accident happened, and it was a question as to whether the yellow came out in time. I believe that he got the yellow flag, and, and if he had not, I believe that that he would have let Michael Waltrip get back in the lead lap. But, you know, it, it just it was right at him when, when he came off of that corner and had no time to react. Here's our replay of what happened from the Pennzoil copter cam. That's Dick Trickle that he was talking about. They're making some contact with Trickle. I don't... They were talking on the radio. Now, whether or not... Uh... Pace car turn three. Well, damage on the right side of the uh, Bud Chevrolet. Really doesn't look that bad, does no, it? it? doesn't. Three, seven hundred, second gear, Randy. Let's try it again. Up up here, these three cars, as they come in the corner, the joy goes up. It's hard to tell. It's so hard to tell. At least it was a black car behind him. <laughs> and Jimmy Spencer, I know that was Spencer behind him, but I... So Randy LaJoy is okay. Car not hurt very bad, but the caution is out at the end of 132 laps for the trans South Financial 400. Back at Darlington, there on the far right of your screen, you see the cars that are pitting on the back stretch entering the pits back there. We're on board with a pace car looking back on Chad Little. So pit stops have occurred here on the front straightaway, and some positions were gained by some drivers. Well, Jeff Gordon, I think, is going to pick up a spot. We see Rusty Wallace, the points leader. Dale Jarrett, Jeff Burton coming down pit road. We see, we see Gordon right up the very top of the screen. There he is. Right sides are on. Left sides coming around for the left sides. We go back to the triple pits. The right sides are going on the two, the 88 and the 99. All the other cars on the lead lap coming in. Jeff Gordon's crew is finished with his pit stop. He takes off. Watch as he comes down pit road. The other guys, the three leaders, still changing the tires. Mark Martin makes a pit stop. Bobby the body. He's going to work on his car. Dale Jarrett comes out of the pits. Jeff Burton comes out of the pits, but it's Jarrett, Gordon, Burton, and then Rusty Wallace. So Gordon picks up one spot there on that good pit stop again by his Rainbow Warriors. We're nearing the halfway point of this race, and we're under caution because of an incident up in turn number two involving Randy LaJoy. Back in a motion here at Darlington. Second time today that the caution has waved. Right behind the pace car, Ernie Irvin in the 36. And then right behind him, Jeff Bodine, Bodine, who's Bodine, yeah. 94 laps behind. And then comes the leader, Dale Jarrett. And we'll take this opportunity while there's no racing on the track for an ESPN track fact. Track facts brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil. For what you drive and the way you drive it, the choice is clear. The ignition box. It's certainly one of the most recognized terms in NASCAR Winston Cup racing. Often during an event, you'll see a car that's running extremely well suddenly slow down on the track for no apparent reason. The first thought, an ignition box problem. Well, here is an ignition box pairing, two of them sitting right in the center of this car in the coolest possible place in the car. Remember, cooler is better. Now, what does the ignition box do? Well, basically, it takes the 12 volts from the battery, amplifies it three to 4,000 times, sending 30 to 40,000 volts to the spark plug to ignite the engine. Now, if your race car was the human body, the ignition box would probably be the brain because you could have all the power you need and all the fuel you want. But if the brain doesn't tell the car what to do, it's simply going to sit there. Now, when a driver thinks his ignition box has failed during a race, here's what he does. He throws these two switches on the dash. The first switch changes from this ignition box to the second one, an identical twin. The second switch triggers a change from this coil to a second coil also an identical twin. Now remember, the coil operates in tandem with the ignition box. Often you don't have to change the coil, but in the heat of the race, 
you want to find the simplest and the quickest fix. Now, why does an ignition box fail? Well, take a look at all this circuitry. A potential nightmare because these boxes get very hot and there's a lot of vibration inside the car during a race. On this particular box, this coil failed, probably because of heat or a vibration. Now, one more thing to keep in mind. Sometimes when the driver changes ignition boxes, he loses the tachometer. So he has to be extremely careful about his speed when entering and exiting pit road. Very good, Bill. What do you think, BP? I think I'm going to give him an A for that. What do you think, yes, man? Sir, he did it right on. Very good job. Jeff Bodine's car is stopped down here uh, on the straightaway, not missing the front end of the car, which was torn off when he crashed here on the main straightaway early in the race. I would guess that NASCAR's asked him to go the back of the field. This is a very tough racetrack. Darlington is very narrow, and he's 94 laps down, 95 laps down, so it really doesn't make any sense to get up there hustling with those people, and the SC starts moving and pulls up. Bill Weber has an update on Johnny Benson. Well, Benson is having another strong run. It's an old story now. They missed Daytona, but they've been pretty darn good ever since, and he's having a good run here today. According to my unscientific, sometimes unreliable map, he had another great pit stop and actually picked up two spots here on pit road. Steve Meal told me that Cheerios Ford was a little tight early. They took a little wedge out. Now the car is running extremely well. That's a good Ford. But Gordon is a very good Chevrolet. He just had another good stop. They took one round of bite out of the right side. Gordon's pit stop would have been even faster. But because he was so far ahead of Dale Earnhardt on the track when they came on the pit road, Gordon's pit stop was over. He had to wait his Earnhardt directly in front of him. So he waited while Earnhardt went by, then darted out of the pits. He had a good stop that could have been great, but he used his head. Backstretch to John Kearney. Terry Labonte pitting on the backstretch came in running in the fifth position. He returned to the track eighth. They have asked NASCAR to please speed up the pace car when the caution is out. So they, after they drop the cars off on the front stretch, so the backstretch guys can get back here and not be at such a disadvantage. Let's go back racing. Indeed, pace car is in, and the green flag waves again. Cars on the left side of your screen. Cars on the right side of the screen, a lap down. That's Ernie Irvin, and he now is two laps down. Ben, remember, he made that green flag pit stop, had problem on his pit stop, so he is now two laps down. He's being shown in 26th position. It's Jarrett, Gordon, Burton, then Rusty Wallace, Johnny Benson. Kenny Wallace is running in sixth position. Great run for Kenny Wallace, a square D car. And here comes Jeff Gordon on the inside of Ernie Irvin. is running in sixth, uh, seventh position. Terry Labonte in eighth. Then John Freddy ninth. And Ward Burton. They complete the top ten. Thirteen cars on the lead lap. Those other three are Dale Earnhardt in 11, Bobby Labonte in 12th, and Jeremy Mayfield in 13th. And Mayfield has gained some spots here in the last uh, few minutes. He got back on the lead lap. Well, remember after their, their last uh, green flag pit stop, he came up and Dale Earnhardt was leading at that time. He came up and passed him and then stayed out in front of the leaders, and when that caution came out, that worked to his advantage. Ricky Rudd is off the pace. That tied Chevy, Ford, Ford I should say, is uh, not up to speed. You're watching a first-plus financial field summary showing you the points as of right now. There is Jeremy Mayfield in that mobile one Ford. Right behind Bobby Labonte and Dale Earnhardt. Battle for second spot, Jeff Burton, the X-side batteries for Tars, goes by Jeff Gordon, taking that second spot away. Look at the manufacturer's battle as of right now. Ford and Chevy are tied. How about that? And the rookie points, well, Irwin continues, of course, to be on top, and Nadeau and LePage are tied. And that's where they're running at the moment. Of course, Steve Park is recuperating from those injuries suffered at Atlanta, wishing him the best and a speedy recovery. Here comes Rusty Wallace diving to the inside of Jeff Gordon. He'll take over the third spot. So Gordon has lost two spots here since the green flag dropped. And if Johnny Benson has any say in this, he may lose another one. Benson, here he comes. And boy, look at this mess. There's Earnhardt right in the middle of it behind Bobby Labonte and Jeremy Mayfield. That's the number nine Cartoon Network car of Lake Speed between Earnhardt and Mayfield. And Lake is running back in 18th spot, a lap down. Bill Elliott also just 
one lap down in 20th position after a pit stop. That went wrong. Ernie Irvin is in, John Kernan. Ernie has had to pit because of a flat left rear tire. Apparently ran over something out on the racetrack, and the tire went flat. So his bad luck continues. Remember, he'd already dropped two laps down. Now he will lose at least another lap. Boy, you are right, VP. When it rains, it pours for him today. It huh? does. This is what happened. Watch Ernie's car. It's right in the middle there of that pack. And we see him go in the corner. The car gets loose. He tries to go to the fence. And look at all those guys <laughs> behind him. Terry Labonte, Greg Sachs, Joe Nemechek, John Andretti. All those guys trying their best to dodge other cars as they try to slow down. Back out down to John Kernan. Okay, this is the tire, the left rear tire off of Ernie's car. He got into the side of someone, and you can see where their fender just kind of ripped along the sidewall, punctured it over here, and that's where the air escaped. Ernie went, the tire went flat, but he was able to save the car, not wreck, bring it on pit road, change four tires, and get back out there safely. There's the leader for the second place car of Jeff Burton, and we got a crack. Sliding down the straightaway and going into the turn. Going into turn three. A lot of damage to that car on the right side. And I tell you what, that was looks like a one-car wreck, and they could have easily had a six-car wreck there. <laughs> because it was cars all around him. Our third caution of the day. Here's the replay. Look at all this. Look at all these cars. That's Sachs on the very right side. And the 97 car of Chad Lewis trying to go to the inside. Sachs comes down, and there's a little bit of contact there from Chad Lilly goes down, and bam, hard in that inside wall. So those roof flaps come up when he got to, to going backwards. And he keeps it down. If that car had slid back up in the roof, it could have been trouble. Right there, you see the contact that will be made and just spins Greg Sachs around. Nothing he could do. Man, oh man. Yet another angle. And look, I mean, that, that could have easily been a 10 car crash. Yes, it could. There's a lot of cars behind them there, but he spun down to the inside, out of the way. If he had it touched the car and turned it the other way in front of that traffic, mm. oof, I hate to think. Yeah, it would have been big. Well, now, we are at the halfway point of the race, 147 laps completed. Will they pit? That's the next question. We've only been a few laps, but will they pit? Seven laps. Will they come in and put on fresh tires? It's only seven laps. Folks, it's only seven laps. <laughs> Dale Jarrett, it's... Oh, they're all coming in. Well, are they, are they faking each other out, or what are they going to do? No, they're going to pit. Bill Weber. Yeah, it's Darlington. You can come get tires. Come on and get them if you're up front. In fact, Ray Everham had just told Jeff Gordon the tires are going in the direction you want them to go. That means they're getting very good wear. They've had three good stops. Now they're looking for another one. Right side tires going on. Earnhardt cuts right in front of them. Clean the windshield for Gordon. They'll come around and they'll do the left while Earnhardt pits in front of them. Left sides are going to go on here in a second. They take off the old one, put on the new. Fuel is in. And Gordon's away. Now to Jerry and Jerry. Jared and Burton pitting nose to tail down toward turn one. Last time, Jared's crew able to beat the 99 out of the pit. It is a race. Viciously down here. Left side tire. And once again, the 88 car is down and away. Still 99. Trouble with the left front. He is off the jack, pulling back to turn one. Looks like Gordon we'll may come out second again, although uh, he and Rusty came down the uh, pit exit just about side by side. As the pit crew, the uh, track crew, I should say, still at the Greg Sachs car. John Kernan. On the backstretch, Jeremy Mayfield. We talked about what a good job he has done after that first pit stop when an air gun broke. That kind of set them back. But he has fought hard all day, stayed on the lead lap. It'll be a four-tire change, no chassis adjustments. Jeremy pretty happy with the car. But Terry Labonte is going to beat him out with his pit stop here on the backstretch as they head out. One thing that's working in this guy's favor now, hitting on the back stretch, is the fact that there are only 13 cars on the lead lap. Craig Sachs is okay. He rides along as his car is taken behind the wall here at Darlington Raceway. There it is, the oldest super speedway overhead Pennzoil copter cam shot. 
We're just past the halfway mark in the Trans South Financial 400. At the moment, it's Dale Jarrett showing the way. Back in a moment. Car away on the rollback. Well, I had on the record a moment ago. What happened? Yeah. We showed you that Ricky Rudd had problems a little bit earlier. Bill, what's the story? Well, the voltmeter had dropped to zero, so the alternator had stopped charging the battery. Now they put a new belt on the alternator. A moment ago, Ricky stopped, and they changed out the old battery. So now they've got a new battery and a new belt on the alternator. Dave Anthony looking into the right side window at some of the gauges. Rudd returns to the track. We'll see if they got it done. Three laps down in 36th position. All right. Jeff Bass is so hot. We see the NASCAR officials holding Lake Speed, the Cartoon Network board, for something. Anyway, Jeff did not agree with it. Hmm. There was a lot of congestion as uh, several cars tried to come out of the pits. And <laughs> we see Todd Bodine pull up in front of the Steve Grissom car. See the 29 car of Jeff Green almost run Steve Grissom in the wall. and. Here comes Chad Little, and he's going to beat them all out, I think. Of course, that was on the back stretch pits. Which used to be the front stretch pits. And as you exit <laughs> that pits, it becomes very tight. Just ask, ask Dick Brooks, because I pinned him in the wall there one time, exiting the pits. Well, how rude of you, I didn't mean to. <laughs> all right, we'll get another commercial break here as we're under caution at Darlington Raceway. We're back at Darlington Raceway where the caution remains out because of the Greg Sachs crash. There is the remainder of the car. Happened a lap shy of the halfway mark. Lap 146. Coming down the back stretch, there's contact between Chad Little and Greg Sachs, and Sachs is hard into the back stretch wall. They finally made it back to the garage area in the car. With the car, they're having trouble getting it off the wrecker. Yep. I think if you just tilt that thing up enough, it'll fall off. <laughs> so we're going to have to run five green flag laps here to determine who wins the Gatorade halfway money of $10,000. Here comes a first plus financial field summary for you. As the lights remain on the pace car. Dale Jarrett, the current leader, Jeff Gordon second, then Wallace, Benson, Burton, Martin, Labonte, Andretti, Earnhardt, and Mayfield, the top 10, 13 cars are on the lead lap. Take a look at 16 through 30 here this afternoon. Musgrave, all these cars back to 24. Timmy Spencer, one lap down. Elliott, a lap down. And then we got some cars, two laps down. And here's the balance of the field. They are three or more laps down. You can see Rick Mast is out of the race. And Jeff Bodine is back out there, but 94 laps down. Okay, well, they're still under caution. Here we go again. Join us when we... Three. The green flag comes out. We are back to racing. Dale Jarrett leads Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace across the stripe. Johnny Benson back there in fourth position, and Jeff Burton is in fifth. Boy, these restarts at this racetrack, as trench as it is, what a recipe for disaster. $10,000 to that team. Ernie Irvin, the 36th car. Kenny Irwin in the 28th car. Irvin and Irwin. And they're both trying and Jeff Burns is in. Somebody let me by. Yeah, he's really boxed in there right now. Burton has had the fastest car on the red track most of the day. sixth position and one driver who is not here this weekend is still at home recuperating from injury suffered a couple of weekends ago at Atlanta is Steve Park and we welcome him by telephone Steve how are you doing I'm doing good Bob uh, I've, I've run Darlington twice before in the Bush series and this is definitely the most comfortable way to run <laughs> Darlington is, uh, with your leg up from the uh, from the armchair but that's for doctor's orders just a matter of uh, resting now for a while. You're going to enter rehab soon? Uh, they, they actually have me in rehab about an hour each day. 
um, and that's even including Sunday. So we got that out of the way this morning so we can sit back and watch great races. Like what do you think about the race, Steve, so far? It's been great, I'll tell you. you know, Jeff Burton, he's looked real strong on the, on the long runs, and, and Dale Jarrett's doing a great job right now, and it looks like the last adjustment they made on that car has made the car pretty dominant, but what about Jeff Gordon and those Rainbow Warriors? They haven't had one bad pit stop today, and, and that's for them guys up in the second spot, and can uh, uh, maybe lead some laps later on today. Steve, it's Ned Jarrett. We certainly wish you well. Wish you were here, but uh, look forward to having you back soon. Well, thanks, Ned. And I, I really miss it. This is probably the one of the hardest things I've gone through, and uh, and knowing there's a race going on on Sunday in, at Darlington, and, and having to sit back on the on the on the couch and watch it makes it a little bit harder. But uh, you guys are doing a great job, and I just want to thank all the fans and everybody else for all their support. Steve, uh, one guy we haven't talked a great deal about yet, but somebody who's running real well is that guy there on the left of your screen, uh, Kenny Wallace. He's up there in ninth position and uh, staying right with him. Yeah, Kenny's, Kenny's done a great job all day. He's been kind of like a self-bomber. You haven't heard much about him, but he's been creeping up on everybody all day long. And what about Johnny Benson? Um, he's a guy that you, you heard from Steve Beal. They thought they had a great race car, and uh, now he's up there in the top five running real well. So, uh... I think it's going to unfold to be uh, to be a great race towards the end. Jeremy Mayfield uh, dropped way back in the standings there for a while, but now he's up there battling again. Yeah, he is, and uh, he's having a good battle with Kenny right now, and uh, he's another guy that had a bad qualifying run and has come from the back of the pack and um, has made a lot of progress all day long. So uh, I think you're going to see a real surprise at the end at, at who it comes down to to uh, really battle out for the win. Little contact there, look like, between Mayfield and Wallace. Watch this, Steve Park doing a great analyzing job back there on the <laughs> telephone. Didn't you he guys need us, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Ca caution, there's some debris. Oh, they got a spin. And Ernie back across oh. the racetrack so far, guys, missed him. I'm clear. In. Got one on the outside. Everybody will miss him. Wow. Man. is out. That was close. That was close. I would guess when okay. the caution flag came out that Ernie backed off and somebody behind him didn't. So the fourth caution of the afternoon comes on lap 164. Man, I have no idea. I mean, it's like when, when we first put them tires on, it seemed like it was going to be all right. And then when I ran around for a lap under, uh, you know, after we had put a lap on them, they're, uh, they're terrible. Huh. Hey, 10 -4, maybe it's just because they got rubber built up on them and, uh, it, you know, they sat there and cooled back down. Maybe they just go all to hell. So. Pete? What do you think uh, they're talking about, the Ernie and Ryan Pemberton? If pit road is open next time, I will pit. He's made a good comment where they, they don't really know where the inconsistency in the tires are coming from. And I think you saw yesterday after the Bush race with the amount of rubber that gets built up, uh, not only on the outside of the racetrack, which you can see in the corner there, but also on the inside. And I think if you get out of the racing groove and get some of that, uh, the marbles or quote-unquote marbles built up on the tires, that um, you might think you have a good, cool tire to say. Uh, to start to restart but really have to uh really hang on the car down into turn one and i think that's where ernie got in trouble and once again after six laps of green flag racing they're going to spend another 1500 get four more tires <laughs> 45 miles an hour is the speed limit bill weber jeff gordon the first to flank off and they're going to make a four tire change here and put fuel in but they want to look very closely at the left front because they think gordon might have hit something it looks fine from here. They come around to the left side. They already have the right side. The car looks fine. Should be four tires, a clean grill, a clean windshield, and fuel for Jeff Gordon. He's down. Here's Jerry. Dale Jarrett in for what could be the stop that will set him up for one final pit stop. They wanted to come back in. This crew wants to beat the 99. They have been battling all day. The last two pit stops, they have beaten the 99. Here is Jeff Burton by. And Jeff Burton will beat the 88 out nearly into the side of Rusty Wallace as they head back to turn one. Let's go to John Kernan. And on the backstretch, Terry Labonte will be entering his pit momentarily. But hey, check out on the racetrack, the number 12 of Jeremy Mayfield. He has stayed out, so he will take over the race lead. A little bit of strategy right there. Only a few laps on those tires decide to stay out. We'll have to see how that plays out for that team. Labonte's crew making no adjustments. His crew chief, Andy Graves, said they've only made a few small adjustments all day. The car is running really well. They've just been backed up in track position. Now, the work is finished. Terry will be down and away. Well, 
world. These pit stops are occurring under caution. And the reason we had the caution was, first of all, debris on the racetrack, but then we had a problem with Ernie Irvin up at the first and second turns. And we don't have any idea why he spun. I guess he just, he, as he told Ryan, he said, I have no idea. Maybe I got in the high or got lower, got some debris on the tires, and the car goes around. And it's very fortunate that we're, we're on the caution flag because I think some of the cars have slowed down. Right along with Jerry Nadeau, we'll see if we can see what happens. Rudd hit him. <laughs> and from another angle, you see that Ernie was way up high on the racetrack. When he spun to the inside, we all held our breath because the car shot up high on the racetrack, but fortunately, Everybody was able to miss Ernie. The leader of the race is Jeremy Mayfield, who did not pit under this caution period, but he has fought his way back to the front after being way back in the standings. Can we uh, take a look at this magnificent facility here at Darlington from the Pennzoil Copter Cam, the egg-shaped racetrack known as the track too tough to tame, Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. Field has been given the one more to go signal. They're over in car corner number two, and next time around, they'll be getting that green flag. Now, there's more on the halfway money. Here's Jerry. Well, Bob, you mentioned that Dale Jarrett had won the halfway money on lap 147. That's $10,000. He and Robert Yates, his car owner, have talked it over and agreed they are going to donate the money to the Tim Flock Fund. Tim Flock, of course, one of NASCAR's pioneers who is battling cancer right now. And a number of the drivers, including Darrell Waltrip, who wanted to run Tim's number 300 here and has the Tim Flock special on the side of his Chevrolet trying to be able to develop some interest here to help Tim defray what have become very, very expensive hospital and medical bills while he battles cancer. So Dale Jarrett, 10 grand from the halfway being donated to Tim Flock. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Jeff Gordon beat everybody off the front stretch. He called back to his crew. You guys are awesome. That's a great stop. You just got us five points. Then he got to the back stretch and saw Jeremy Mayfield didn't pit. So now Jeff's going to try and get his five points on this restart. With more, here's Kernan. That's right. By staying out, Mayfield, who's second in the points, gets five bonus points for leading a lap. Scrucci Paul Andrews says, hey, it's only seven green flag laps on that set of tires. He also says, we don't expect to stay up front that long, but runs well on the long runs that they'll be able to hang in the top five. Well, he might stay up there a good while. Jeff Gordon got caught in traffic. Rusty Wallace got by him, but Mayfield was able to get himself a three. And I think that's the part of Paul Andrews and Jeremy Mayfield's part to stay out there, get them that five bonus points, and get that track position. Jeremy is our fifth leader of the day. Jeff Burton has led 112 laps. Jarrett, 48. Mayfield, 5. Martin, 3. And Bill Elliott has led one. We have had 10 lead changes. Here comes trouble, though. Jeff Burton at 99 cars. You said has led so many laps. Is very, very quick. He has four fresh tires. See, the uh, number one Pennzoil car didn't make the race with Ron Porter down driving at... Uh, this weekend. What are the plans for the future regarding that? Do you know? Well, right now, uh, you know, we're real happy to have Ron uh, try to get the car in the race this weekend. And uh, he had a he had a problem with uh, a sticker tire run and, and and banged up the primary car and they had to go to a backup car and, and didn't make the show. But we're real thankful for Ron and, and uh, his whole family for helping us out there and. Uh, Ron's going to also try to qualify the car in Bristol. He, he won the race there last year in the truck, and uh, I think he has a lot more confidence uh, racing there before uh, to try to go there and run the Winston Cup race. Kenny Irwin, the 28 car, trying to stay out in front of the 99. He feels like if he can stay there, they'll catch the 12, and he can get that lap back. But here comes the 99. Jeff Burton down to the inside. A great run off that second corner, but he's right by Kenny Irwin. Irwin is the lap down. He's the last car, or the first car this one lap down. He's in 14th position. Well, Steve, we thank you for joining us, and uh, we 
Hope that you're back in competition very, very soon, but uh, for the moment, just uh, relax and try to heal up, huh? Well, thanks, Bob, and thanks, Benny, and, uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to getting to feeling good enough that uh, we could at least get back to the racetrack and, and see some of my old friends and uh, some, uh, some of you guys again, which will hopefully be in the next uh, couple of weeks, but thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it. Okay. Good luck to you, man. Thank Best you. of luck. All right, Steve Park on the mend at home. There is Michael Walton leading this group of cars down through the corner. Michael is in 16th position, a lap down right behind him is Sterling Marlin. That's a battle for position. Those cars are battling for the 16th position, one lap down. Meanwhile, right behind them is Dale Jarrett, who is currently the fifth place car. There he is. And Mark Martin, a pole sitter, right behind the battling Ford. And Johnny Benson right behind Mark Martin. So they're five, six, and seven. On board with Mark Martin. He was the pole sitter today. And look at the 99 closing in on Wallace in second spot. Boy, Burton's got a good car, doesn't he? He does have. He's had a great car all day. Jeff Burton had a great car here last fall. Remember that great battle between oh, yeah. him? Jeff Gordon, we're at the end of the Southern 500. You can see our Napa Field Summary. Check it out where your favorite driver would be running. Also on the right side, the points as of now. Elliott would be in third position. Gordon fourth. While the teammates, Rusty Wallace and Jeremy Mayfield, would hang on to first and second. And here is Mark Martin and Dale Jarrett battling for fifth, and right behind him is Johnny Benson. Well, what happened, Jarrett got under Sterling Marlin coming off the turn two over there and had to back off. He almost spun it out, and Mark got a good run and got the side of it, but was not able to pull off the pass. battle as of right now and the rookie points remain the same with Kenny Irwin about 20 ahead of both Nadeau and LePage and of course we just talked to Steve Park on the phone who's back home recuperating there's how they're running Kenny Irwin in 14th the best of the rookies at this point now we watch this battle for second position between Burton and Wallace the urban slows going into turn one. Johnny Benson running together, 6th and 7th. And Benson taking a look on the inside. There is Irwin, that said he has slowed down. Must have a flat, Bob. Yep. Dropped off the pace, coming down the front stretch here, and now he's over in turn number 4, headed toward the pits. He was running in 14th position. He really was doing a great job today. This would be costly for him. I mean, look at this. They closed it up, and it's first, second, and third. Let's see who comes out with the lead as Rusty looks to the inside of Mayfield. And a little bump in there between Burton and Wallace, as it looks like both of them are going to go around Mayfield, who has the older tires. And look at Jeff Burton just down to the inside of Rusty Wallace and takes the lead. Wow, what a power move by Burton. Down to Jerry Punch. A flat right side tire. That's been the undoing of Kenny Irwin, the impressive rookie driver. Right side, now left side tire going on. They were talking about needing a pry bar as he nearly stalls it, leaving the pits. Finally gets it back in gear and pulls away, but that will cost him even more time under the green on the racetrack. Indeed, Irwin now down two laps as the battle on the racetrack continues, but now Burton begins to inch ahead of Rusty and Jeremy. Did Rusty lead that lap when he was making that pass? Yes, we have him leading one lap. That yes. was his first time he led today, but he, but he did uh, get those five bonus points. The 
back there is the fourth place car, Jim Gordon. And the 16 car, Kurt Musgrave, is in fact a lap down. He's 14th, the first car a lap down. Right behind Jeff Gordon. And that he did not lead a lap. It was on my board here, shown as a lap leader, but a descent's been removed, so Rusty did not pick up those five points. And you're right, that's very, very important, isn't it? Yes, it is. And Kenny Irwin coming back down pit road. Jerry, what's the problem now? They thought when he pitted a moment ago that he had a flat tire, but when he started to leave the pits, he had trouble getting the car to move, and now the crew, Slugger, Labby, and company have told him to bring it to the garage area, bring it around behind the wall. They've either broken an axle or possibly something in the rear end, possibly a ratchet in the rear end. He breaks the car back behind the wall, and they will bring it to a stop. They will put the jack under, jack it up, put jack stands, and see if it is an axle or possibly a ratchet, but a tough break mm. for an impressive rookie driver after having a pretty good run here through most of the afternoon. You see one of the quality care yeah. Dale Jarrett's crew over there working on so they, they intermingle the crew members wherever they might need them. Yep. Jeff Burton has the lead by just about a second over Rusty Wallace as 184 of the 293 laps have been completed. Wallace second, Jeremy Mayfield shown as third, Jeff Gordon fourth, and Dale Jarrett is fifth. Well, the Chevy and Ford rivalry being battled out of the racetrack and the rivalry between Gordon and Jarrett also being fought out there as Jarrett has gone to fourth place. Both of them got on the restart, got caught behind some lap traffic and really dropped far behind the leaders and uh, are playing catch up now. Jarrett was about two, three seconds behind Gordon, but now has uh, been able to run him down and pass him, but he's still about six seconds behind the leader. Jerry Punch has a report on the Kenny Irwin car. Well, they have diagnosed the problem, guys, and they're working feverishly to try to be able to get this thing out, but uh, they, now they have the, the right rear axle out, and it has literally come apart. It has chewed off on the right side. Let me use the vice grip here to try to hold it together. I'll get it over to our camera here, Corky, so we can stay away from where they're working. That is the right rear axle. This is the outside part of the right rear axle. You see where it is sheared away there, and that was indeed the problem. They're going to replace the axle. That was the reason that Kenny Irwin thought he had a tire going down. He only had one wheel pulling coming through the corners. It will replace the right rear axle. That's what uh, Ray Fox and the crew are doing right there at the right rear of the car, trying to get it back out. In fact, they already had the axle replaced. They are putting the brake hub assembly back in place and should have him, that slugger Labby, the crew chief, under the car on his stomach, trying to make sure they're checking the rear end and make sure they get the axle seated well and uh, should be able to get him back up probably in the next 10 minutes or so. Hey, Doc, why are you holding that with the vice grips? Because it's hot, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the steam coming off of it. <laughs> He's a doctor. He knows about that stuff. I picked one up, and that was one too many. <laughs> Back on the racetrack, Jeff Burton continues to rack up the lap sled. Now up to 125. I'll tell you what, if we pan that camera back a little bit, you're going to see Jeremy Mayfield is not that far behind him. And he's out there with tires with about five or six more laps on him, Jeff Burton. It looks like they have found the handle on that road. Look at he's going up there. He's found that high group. Yeah. When he saw Jeff Burton go by and saw that line he was running, he started running that line, and we can see how, just how much he's picked up. And same thing applied to David Jerry. He moved up there as well, and he caught Jeff Gordon. Gordon was running down low. Now Gordon has picked up that high line coming through there. With Jerry. We see here Dale Earnhardt and Terry Labonte talking about rivalries. Here's one, and they're battling for the 11th position at the moment. And right there also is the 18 car of Bobby Labonte. 11th, 12th, and 13th. The last three cars on the lead lap. They're running about 15, almost 16 seconds. Earnhardt has won nine times at this facility. He has led no laps today, however. If he were able to pull off a win today and capture his 10th victory, he would tie David Pearson for most wins at Darlington. They're the last lap speeds up in the upper left box for you. You see Jeremy Mayfield almost, what was that, three-quarter mile for a half mile per hour faster than the leader, Jeff Burton. Wallace was the slowest of those top five cars. His car is not, not getting through the corners as well as he would like for it to right now, but he's still hanging on to third place.
like to make one more pit stop before this is over. See Bobby Labonte there, the Interstate Batters Pontiac running back in the 13th spot. Charles of 10 races he's been here, no victories, two top fives in the last five, and five top ten, top tens in the last five races. You see just how important that experience is here at Darlington. He too has begun to figure out how to run this place. A lot of traffic up ahead of him, and boy, he came off that corner high. There's Randy LaJoy being passed by. He spun and caused one of the caution periods earlier. Now Terry goes a little bit high. Bobby had a notion, but said, no, now's not the time. Kenny Irwin has completed the work on his car. He's back in competition. He is 19 laps down in 39th spot. Just two cars out of the race, Greg Sachs and Rick Mast. Jeff Burton leads. His advantage is about two seconds over Jeremy Mayfield. There in the number one car. And you see 18 seconds in front of Bobby Labonte back in 13th spot, the last car I saw set on the lead left. See, Dale Jarrett has moved around the car number two of Rusty Wallace. And I mentioned a moment ago that Jeff Gordon was staying with Jarrett. You know, Mark, back, Mark Martin has passed him. And Rusty still struggling a little bit in the corners. Bill Weber has more on Rusty Wallace. Oh, you're right, Ned. He's definitely struggling. Before this race began, we talked about the experienced leadership that's helped Rusty in the first four races this year. Roger Penske is here on top of the press box, helping spot for Rusty. Both Penske and Cruci's Robin Pemberton have told Rusty, race your line and the track, not necessarily the field. The problem with Rusty running his line right now, his car is very, very loose. That's not exactly how we put it, but this is a family show. In fact, the best fellas on the racetrack right now is younger brother Kenny. He had a terrible qualifying run on Friday, and he blamed that on ESPN2 because he was sitting in his holder watching the qualifying show. He saw the line Bobby Labonte ran and had a great lap. He said, I'm going to run that line. He tried and couldn't do it, almost hit the wall. Saturday, he came back in second round, had a great lap. He not only was second round fastest, he had the second fastest time in the starting field today. Still, he had to start 26. Their cars been great. They made an air pressure adjustment on the first stop. Newt Moore, his crew chief, says this is the best car they've ever had, ever, anywhere. They're just biding their time. Wow, and he's trying to to get his second top 10 finish. He finished seventh at Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. There is Jeff Gordon, and he slid all the way back to sixth. And check this out, Ernie Irvin, who's clearly had some troubles. Ernie Irvin must have stopped and got some tires. Clear. He must have stopped and got tired just to be able to drive by. Okay. Yep. Well, the Ted Musgrave, who went a lap down not too long ago, passed Gordon and ran off the left, and Ted's a lap down. Bill, is there a problem with the 24? He was loose any time anybody got behind him, which you would expect. He was tight any time he got behind somebody else. He was fine when he was running on his own. But right now, he's very, very loose. The Rainbow Warriors just began to scramble here along Pit Road. We could see Gordon forced to make a green flag stop. He also has not picked up five points for leading a lap. He's been as low as 30th and as high as second. Right now, Jeff Gordon about 12 seconds behind the leader of the race in sixth place. The leader of the race is Jeff Burton. We'll be back with more live coverage in a moment from Darling Burton around this 1.3-mile racetrack at Darlington, South Carolina from the Pennzoil Copter Cam. Jeff continues to lead here, about a two-and-a-half-second lead now on Jeremy Mayfield. Tune in the Deuce today at 5 o'clock Eastern time for the NHRA Pennzoil Nationals from Houston Raceway Park. The defending champions there, Joe Amato in Top Fuel, John Force in the Funny Cars, and Jim Yates in Pro Stock. And you'll see the Pro Stock trucks for the first time on the Deuce today at 5 o'clock, the National Hot Rod Association Pennzoil Nationals. 
Well, the story here today has basically been Jeff Burton and Dale Jarrett. As far as leaders are concerned, the Bud Race recap will show you that Burton has clinched the five bonus points for leading the most laps. We've had 11 ch uh, changes of the lead, four cautions for 26 laps. Here are those who have led a lap, just five drivers, and the five drivers all drive Fords. Now, out of race, just two cars, Greg Sachs and Rick Mast, both because of, or whether Greg Sachs because of a crash. We have had about three crashes today, but nothing of any consequence. One of the top ten cars is on pit road, David John Andretti, in the Richard Petty STP Pontiac, making what might be his last pit stop. Although, he's got, what, about uh, 80, 80 laps to go? No, I don't think he can go that far. He'll have to make another pit stop. Mark Martin is closing in on Rusty Wallace for fourth. Yes, he is. He's now only about a quarter of a second behind Rusty Wallace and has been gaining each and every lap. So Rusty is struggling. We saw him up there not too far back. Now he's almost nine seconds behind the leader, Jeff Burton. Mark Martin won, of course, in Las Vegas earlier this year, recorded a victory here at Darlington of the Southern 500 in 1993. Here's the hot zone Tabasco telemetry. See, 170 mile per hour as Ernie Over, those fresh tires, goes by him. He slows down to 124 mile per hour. Now the accelerate as the speed and RPM gauge. Battle for position. Bobby Labonte goes by Earnhardt and moves him into 11th spot. Earnhardt had a notion to try to go back by, but just look. Then we used to watch those bush races here, and Earnhardt always did that at Coon Run. <laughs> There's a big triple going by Earnhardt as well. Trickle back in 21st spot, two laps down to the leader. Judy Donlin is not here today. He's home recuperating. Judy, hope you're doing, hope you're feeling fine. Check out the AutoZone on track interval here. Looks like Rusty's going the wrong direction. Boy, he sure is. All the speeds on Rusty Wallace over 32 seconds. Every one of them over 32 seconds. And Jeff Burton. 35, 31.5, 31.6, just one lap over the 32 second range. And Mark Martin about to take the fourth yep. position away. Martin goes to fourth and Rusty drops back to fifth spot. While we're saying uh, hello and get well, we wish some happy birthdays. Your, your mom's having a birthday today? My mom's birthday Whoa. today. Happy birthday, Mom. Yeah, David Lakey is the father of uh, our TV. Dennis is having a 70th birthday today, and Jimmy Maycar will be 42 this coming Wednesday. And we showed you the on-track AutoZone interval report. Rusty was slipping away, but Mayfield is catching Burton. Right the last lap, uh, Mayfield was a little bit faster, but you see down on the graphic down there, he is definitely catching it. By about a half second, he closed the interval from laps 212 to 216, and he's doing this on tires that, as we have documented, are about seven laps older, John Kernan. And Bob, even with those tires that have been out there to wear for seven green flag laps, the last time they dropped the green flag, at the start of this run, Mayfield was up in front. His car was tight. Finally, after running about 15 to 20 laps, and he moved up a groove, the car loosened up, it's a lot freer, and it's perfect right now. What this team is hoping for, because it's pitting on the back stretch, is for the race to go the rest of the way without a caution. They will pit probably in six to 11 laps to take four tires for what, what will be their final pit stop if it stays green. They're confident down here they can have another good pit stop. They think that they can get this young driver his first Winston Cup victory. And man, wouldn't that be something to come here at Darlington? It sure would. Jeremy started in 37th position, pits on the back stretch, but still has had a magnificent run here this afternoon. Second place right now, about two and a third seconds behind the leader, Jeff Burton. So we will be standing by for those pit stops when they occur. We'll take another break right now and be back live in a moment to Darlington. Trans South Financial 400 from Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. Jeff Burton, the leader. Fire up your laptops. Now you can really drive on the information superhighway at www.nascar.com with all the information regarding news and 
injury updates and uh, the latest statistics on all the NASCAR divisions at www.nascar.com. There's about a position, the 18 car trying to get by Ward Burton. That would be up to eight spot. The leader's in, Jerry Punch. And they wanted to be able to stay out about four or five more laps, but Jeff Burton had been complaining for the last 15 laps that he had something in the car that felt funny. He said, I think I've got a tire problem. I don't think we can risk it. It's time to call him in five laps early. This, however, will be their final pit stop on lap 227. 66 laps to go to the finish at lap 293. They peel off the windshield film. They will change right side and left side tires. They have made an air pressure adjustment in the right rear to fine tune the car. And this crew wants to make sure to take a very, very close look at the tires that come off and see if they can determine what the problem is. He is down and away. Mayfield is in in front of John Kernan. Jeremy running in second place. They want to have a quick stop. No adjustment. However, I did say we we'll see one of the tiremen making some air pressure adjustments. No, no chassis adjustments. There go the lug nuts on the air tight. And Jeremy is down and away in a great pit stop, but let's see where Burton is out on the racetrack. See if Jeremy can beat him out there and take over the lead. Bobby Labonte is in for a stop. The crew completing the work. He's out in 17.8 seconds. A good pit stop. Jerry. Left side tires for Dale Jarrett. They made a major adjustment on the track bar on the left side. He is down and away. Mark Martin also in further up pit road. They have changed right and left side tires on our pole center with Alvin and Ford. These all are final pit stops. Unless we have a caution, final pit stop for the day. Let's check in on the Rusty Wallace pit. 45 miles an hour down pit road. Final time for Rusty Wallace. If we stay green, like everybody else, we'll get four sticker Goodyear tires and fuel. They tear away the windshield screen, so Rusty has a good view of these final laps. They've taken one pound of air out of each of the right rear tires. Fuel going in. The jack underneath the left side, it goes up. The left side, tires are off. Now they'll tight the lug nuts. They've had good stock all day. Rusty is on his way. And he Seven seconds. Johnny Benson also rolling out of the pit, so as cars uh, on the back stretch. Ward Burton uh, now getting the and he begins to roll away. There's Michael Walter pulling out of the pits. All this on the 229th lap of the race. Ward Burton rolling back into competition. And Jeremy Mayfield did. His brother is the leader, Jeff Burton, but he's got company right on his bumper. The car number 12 did pick up some time on Jeremy Mayfield, so they're running right together on the racetrack. There. Jeremy Mayfield got a tough break as Ward Burton's coming back on the racetrack. He dove under the four car Bobby Hallinson to put him a lap down, and the 22 car was there. He had to back off the gasoline. Now he has his momentum going, trying his best to catch Jeff Burton. He was right on his bumper right after they came out of the pits, but you don't take much, man. You get behind the car, just like you can lose a second. Real easy. So Jeremy Mayfield now begins to close in on the leader of the race, Jeff Burton, who has, for the most part, dominated this afternoon. And the final few laps of this race may be set up as a great, great battle. coverage of the Trans South Financial 400 in just a moment from Darlington, South Carolina. From its humble beginnings on the tracks of the Southeast, NASCAR racing has become the fastest growing sport in America. And this look back as NASCAR celebrates its 50th birthday is brought to you by Coca-Cola Classic. Always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. From the beginning, it's been one of the most intimidating tracks in all of motorsports, known as the track too tough to tame. It's infamous for taking its toll on drivers and equipment. For their efforts, competitors are rewarded with the Darlington Strike. But this grand old track has also been the place for many of racing's milestones. The track itself made history when it was built back in 1949. It was over one mile in length, giving NASCAR its first super speedway. Drivers first competed here in 1950. Some 75 cars lined up for the green. The great Fireball Roberts won the first convertible race held here in 1957. And it was here in the 1963 Southern 500 that Fireball claimed what was to be his final victory. 
A king was crowned at Darlington when the torch was passed from father to son in 67. Richard Petty notched his 55th victory, eclipsing the mark set by his father. Ten years later, it was time for a new generation of racers. Darrell Waltrip got his first ever win on a super speedway at Darlington. In 1985, Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, Bill Elliott won the Winston Million in the Southern 500. And just last year, Jeff Gordon became the second driver to capture the Winston Million, and the latest in a long line to add his name to the record books at Darlington. And we'll continue with our programming surrounding NASCAR's 50th anniversary right after the conclusion of our race at 430. NASCAR racing rivalry, some of the best battles for the championship and head-to-head -head competition. And speaking of head-to-head -head competition, looks like Jeff Burton and Jeremy Mayfield have a pretty good thing going here. Mayfield has caught him. Remember a little bit ago, he's a little over a second behind, but he is right there with him now. I would guess that Jeremy Mayfield, Paul Andrews, everyone connected to that team is right now just praying, please, no more caution flags. Because right now they've got about almost a six-second lead on Dale Jarrett. And the last time, Jeremy Mayfield's car seemed to run better on the worn tires than did Burton's car. Jeremy Mayfield has never won a NASCAR Winston Cup race. He has never finished second. His best result was in the Daytona 500 in Atlanta. He finished third earlier this year. Look at me now. He dives under Burton. This is for the lead. Coming off four. They have him here. Nope. Drops in behind Jeff. So Burton hangs on to the lead. But Mayfield has given him a heck of a battle. Jerry? Well, he told you Jeff Burton had complained of something funny on the car during, before that last pit stop. They were concerned about right rear tire wear. We've seen no significant wear all day long, but this tire here is the right rear that came off of the 99 car. That shiny area right there, that is where the cords were beginning to show. This tire was on the car for 61 laps. To make it all the way to the checkered flag, they will have to run these tires 66 laps. That's probably why Jeff Burton right now may be cooling it a little bit, not wanting to wear out that right rear tire. Wow. All right. Well, they go to the inside of Michael Waltrip and his hopes of uh, finishing up front have gone away. He's now two laps now in 15th position, however. Ricky Rudd watches as the battle for the lead. They got Andretti in front. Here comes Jeremy. He may have him. Mayfield indeed will lead the lap. How about that? It's the second time this afternoon that Jeremy has led. Three third time, I beg your pardon. Third time he has led, and the total number of laps led 18. And the other time that he led, he did didn't make a pit stop, and everybody else did. He inherited the lead this time. He just went, drove up, went up there and drove into the lead. Yes, he did. John Andretti goes a lap down. 11th spot, now just 10 cars on the lead lap. The jury punch shows the tires on that 99 car. John, what about the 12th car? How did they look? Will they latch at the end of the race? Hey, Benny, no problem. Still wow. plenty of tread left on all four tires that Jeremy Mayfield had. In fact, I talked to Paul Andrews. I asked him, you know, are you going to be able to go the rest of the way out these tires without slipping and sliding? Too bad it did. He smiled. He said, no problem. In fact, there was hard. After the initial drop-off, it just stays fairly consistent. Instead of a continuing drop-off, after the initial drop-off, the car just runs the same lap time. So they have hit it on the setup. And you guys said earlier, they got their fingers crossed. They do not want to see a caution. They want this race to end under green. Let's go to Bill Weber. Jeremy's teammate, Rusty Wallace. Right front tire off the Miller Ford. You can see the inside is worn away. Rusty had told his crew he was very, very loose. That was done in six. 65 laps. Rusty thinks he's going to be able to go the distance without any problems on the current set of tires because it's handling very, very well. We'll see. He's in seventh place. We'll watch his hands to see if he can tell how well the car is handling. You know, the drivers are complaining about loose in and pushing coming off. If that's exactly what it looked like watching Rusty Walsh's hands. It looks like going in the corner, he turns. And then he goes back to the right just a little bit to catch it back in. Now as he starts off the corner on the throttle, he's got to keep turning that wheel left, keep snugging that wheel to the left because the car is just tight off the corner. 
The 10th place car of Bobby Labonte just got lapped. Nine cars now on the lead lap, and in ninth position is Kenny Wallace. That's first and second right ahead of Bobby Labonte, with whom we are riding. There they are on the track, separated by less than a second. Jeremy Mayfield's 1998 season. Very, very impressive. Only one time. Oh, and we have a crash, and we do have a caution. That's not what Mayfield wanted. Uh, Randy LaJoy spins off four. Is there a caution? A rope yes. lap up, though. Oh, man, oh, man. Don't you know those guys are just throwing things? No, this is not good. Okay, we'll come in. We'll put us on four more cars. Tough break with Jeremy Mayfield. Here he is coming down to get the caution flag. Caution coming out on lap 250. Here's a replay of what happened up in turn number four. That's LaJoy right in front of it, right coming at you. I'm sorry, he's up higher. He's already wiggled, he's in the wall, and as he comes off the corner, he slides down the racetrack, now back up the racetrack, and look at Schrader go by on the outside. And John and Reddy couldn't see for a little bit, but he was getting slowed down and went by on the inside. From LaJoy's on board. Got a little bit too high, I believe. Maybe got his uh, right wheels up in the loose there. Turn four, man in turn four. There are some marbles up there at the top of the racetrack. That's what they call the small pieces of rubber that work off the tires, and I think he hit those and just lost it. You know, we keep talking about the disadvantage on the back stretch pits. I don't think we're ever going to see a more classic example of exactly what we're talking about than right now, because Jeremy Mayfield is a leader, but he's pitting on the back stretch. Here comes Jeff Burton, the second place car. He's pitting on the front stretch. Here comes the next car would be Dale Jarrett. He's been it on the front. Now, they can't pass the pace car. You see, as the pace cars continue, they have to slow enough. They cannot pass the pace car. But now, as they get to the line, they can... Now, there's a speed limit on pit road of probably 45 miles per hour. The pace cars now have sped up. It's probably running 55, 60 miles per hour. As these guys come down pit road, 45 miles per hour. Jerry? Indeed, Benny, it is 45 miles an hour, 99, 88, and 24, two Fords and a Chevrolet. They will make an adjustment on the 99 car. They will go down on the track bar to tighten the car up. Let's go to Bill Weber on the Rusty Wallace. Rusty's getting four tires. He said his car's very good. NASCAR warned every team about speeding on pit road. Back to the triple pitch. Jerry. Is out. So is the 99, so is the 88, but it'll be Burton and then Jarrett that way, 1-2, down pit road, as now, here comes the 24 car behind the two, let's go to the back pit to John Curtis. And Jeremy Mayfield, the leader, just pulls into his pit stall, it'll be a four-tire change, no adjustments, they did not want to see this caution period, here come the guys who were pitting on the front stretch, we'll have to see if they can come around and beat Jeremy out. They haven't gone by yet. However, here when they go right now as uh, Burton and Jerry go by. Here comes Gordon. Now Jeremy Mayfield is down and away. 19 second stop. He said that last set of tires was the best set they had all day. Paul Andrews told him, hey, the set we're putting on right now is just as good as those. I think you lost four positions by being back there, Ned. It looks that way. It looked like uh, four cars did come by before he got out onto the pit. That's, that's really not that too bad. He made a good pit stop. But, boy, as you said, before they made the pit stop, that's a perfect example. So the pit stops have been completed here. And now Jeremy Mayfield will have a bit of a disadvantage here. We'll see if he can move up through the traffic and get the lead once again. Back in a moment to Darlington. Darlington here, the recap also from the Pep Boys IRL race out in Phoenix, the Duraloop 200, and the Pennzoil Nationals at, in the NHRA. That at 8 o'clock tonight over on ESPN2, RPM tonight. Our salute to the guys who are flying up above Darlington Raceway who are carrying the Pennzoil Copter Cam. We thank you for the work and the overhead shots here today. Well, we're going to get the one-to-go signal. No, we're not. They're going at least one more lap, so we'll take a break. More from Darlington and a lot of race fans to Darlington Raceway to watch the Trans-South Financial 400. We're just
just about to go back to green here. The green will come out on lap 255. 284 complete. 38 laps to go. Jeff Burton takes him down into turn one. And I thought that the fourth car of Jerry Mayfield lost four spots. He, in fact, lost five because Mark Martin also beat him out of the pits. He came out sixth, and then, boy, that's a lot of track position to give up. He was leading the race. Let's check out the pit stop. Jeremy went from first to sixth position. Burton, Jeff, uh, moved up one. Jarrett moved up one. Gordon up one. And Rusty Wallace up three. Rusty's had some great pit stops today. Captain Martin went to Jeff Gordon. This pack is Bobby Labonte, and he is a lap down in 10th position. Here we look back on Jeff Gordon, who's running third. Is this one of those times that they've adjusted on that 24 all day and got it mechanically right? Got that balance right? Just like Benny said that they had to do. What kind of line can I take? What will help my car last these last 35, 40 laps to its maximum? Gordon flipped a little bit coming off the turn two that time. Rusty ran right up on him. He's really good down in turn three and four. That goes a little high. Rusty's going to try to go under. Shouldn't do it. the leader, Jeff Burton. Here comes a Napa Field summary here. The point as of right now. Earnhardt, Gordon, and Elliott, third, fourth, and fifth in the point standing. That's a point summary, not a field summary, rather a yes. point summary, yes. But for where the points are right at the moment, where they're running. that little run but you can see he's dropping back after he his tires up when he when he got up there to Gordon. Gordon's still sticking right in there in third place. Well, look how high he goes in that third place. Seems to be working for him. There you front four cars. Burton, Jarrett, Gordon, and Rusty Wallace. Jarrett just ahead of Jeff is the guy who ruined uh, Jeff's perfect string here. He has won the last five races with the exception of this race last year that Dale Jarrett won. You wonder about Jarrett and Mayfield. He's still in sixth place where he came out of the pit. Mark Martin is fifth. running that very, very low line. As a matter of fact, cuts right across the apron coming off that corner. You wonder if that, of course, he might be having to do that because of the way that his car is, but you think they might make the car push a little bit coming off of that corner and uh, heat that right front tire. Here's Jeremy trying to close in on Mark Martin, who is running fifth. These guys about three and a half seconds behind the leader into the Tabasco hot zone. Telemetry from Mark Martin. And we can see down in turns one and two, the car only goes down to about 145 miles per hour. And down in one and two, we'll see that it slows down probably 10, 15 miles per hour, more than that. 180 miles per hour down in turn three. And he slows 130, 129 miles per hour. Jeremy, that high line gets a great run off the corner. Here he goes. <laughs> Boy, he's diving off the corner, went high, dived down low, and he takes the spot from Mark Martin. Mark knew it and just 
didn't fight him, didn't have any choice but just to let him go right on. Now, last lap by, I'm sorry, last lap by Jeremy Mayfield over four seconds behind the leader. Once again, down 126, 127 miles per hour and turns three and four. That's a small end of the egg. If you wonder why it's so much slower than that corner, then up in one and two. And if you're confused with just what I said, this is an egg-shaped oval that we've talked about so many times. People said at home, what's he talking about? He's talking about food again. <laughs> going to have some bacon. <laughs> Built that way on purpose. Yep. So they could build that fish pond down off the side of three and four. All right, up front. Dale Jarrett now within about four or five car lengths of Burton. Well, his last speed lap was 161.1. Burton's 160.3. They're pulling away from Jeff Gordon now. There's a third place car for Pont Chevrolet of Jeff Gordon. Seven laps to go. That time by the first two cars at almost identical speeds. Terry Labonte is eight. Marley 16th and Schrader 18th. Yep. Dale Jarrett is there. Here he comes on the bottom. Can he get traction? No. Just couldn't quite get the traction he needed coming off the turn. You have to check that thing down there, Benny, coming off of that corner. It's back in to get out the lunges. You don't believe it after Jeff put on a little bit earlier in the race. Boy, the attrition here has not been bad today. Just three cars shown out of the race. Jeff Bodine, Greg Sachs, and Rick Mast. Everybody else still out there running. Now, Jeff Gordon, when they made the... Jared got it beside him. Burton on that last lap, Gordon was able to close in on him. He's not that far back now. He was over a second behind. Now he's only about two-thirds of a second behind. There he is. Just watching what's going on ahead of him between Jared and Burton. Last lap by, the front two cars, a little over 158 miles per hour. Jeff Gordon, over 159 miles per hour. So, right now, it looks like Jeff Burton is slowing down. He's holding Dale Jarrett up. But here comes Jarrett. He's not going to hold him up long. Jarrett's got to run. He's got the spot. Should get him going into turn one. Preferred line. Dale Jarrett takes the lead here on lap 271. But Jeff Burton battles him back and retakes it in two. And here comes Dale Jarrett back up. But look at Gordon. Here's Gordon right back in there. A great car battle for the lead. Jarrett Bird goes up again. Jarrett looks good on him. And this time Bird goes up off the corner. And Jeff hangs on the lead. Wow, good racing. Burton pulled out old Earnhardt trick. And Jarrett went in the turn after he took the lead, went in high. And Burton was able to get down low and get right under him. And Jeff Gordon just sitting there, look, hey, you guys going to race that way. I want to keep that action. And actually, Rusty Wallace is catching them now that uh, they're doing that racing up there. Well, the last lap by, those guys run 154 miles per hour. Jeremy Mayfield, 159 miles per hour. Jeremy is back in three or six seconds behind the last time around. Tell you what, as long as these guys race like this, Jerry might catch them. He could do it. Jeff Burton. Here at Darlington, two top fives, four top tens. Best Darlington finished second in the 97 Southern Finals. Darren again has a run. 
looks to the inside. Nope, not this time. As Ned said, you just can't come off that corner, turn under another car, and do it full throttle. You have to play with that throttle a little bit. And while he's playing with it, Jeff Burton is in the gas, but here comes Jared. No! Oh, start to stick that nose in there, so better not do that. <laughs> That'd be a wreck. Gordon Levin, he's, he's able to stay right with them. And maybe he could anyway, but certainly that racing going on that they're doing up front there. Right here is where Burton is hurting. He's coming off the turn four. Less than 20 laps to go now. It could be any one of those three, or it could be Rusty Wallace or Jeremy Mayfield. It's wide open here in the closing lap. Stay with us. At Darlington, we have a new leader and a new second-place car. Dale Jarrett has gone to the lead. Jeff Gordon has gone to second. And Jeff Burton is dropping back now a little bit. He's over a second behind. This is how Jarrett got the lead from Jeff. This is down between three and four. And all of a sudden, the 99 car just for some reason gets a little bit loose. When he does, he has to squeeze off the accelerator, and Jarrett dives to the inside, and here comes Jeff Gordon, and both those guys were able to get by. And they pulled away. Burton has dropped back one and 17 seconds behind Jarrett. Here's the Pennzoil copter cam shot. You can see Burton loose and giving up the lead to Dale Jarrett. And second place to Jeff Gordon. We got 12 laps to go. You'll see the 18 car down on the bottom of the racetrack. Jerry Punch during the break told us that the engine is going sour on that car and they're trying desperately to finish. Here's Rusty Wallace who's running fourth. About three seconds behind Dale Jarrett. And there is Jeremy Mayfield who is fifth. Almost five seconds behind. For a little bit he closed it down to a little over three seconds behind Bob. He must have gotten some traffic on has dropped back to a little over five seconds now. In any case, a great run for Jeremy Mayfield today, who has led 25 laps. Mark Martin is the driver who is running in sixth position at the moment, about nine and a half seconds behind. And his teammate, Johnny Benson, is running seven. Good run for Johnny. Mark has been among the six leaders today. And there's see Terry Labonte right behind Benson, the eighth place guard. So that is seventh and eighth. The other car in the lead lap is Kenny Wallace, the square D for Taurus. He's trying to run in a ninth spot. And here goes Labonte. Yep. Taking the spot away from Johnny Benson. So put him in the seventh spot. And here is the last car on the lead lap. And boy, salute to Kenny Wallace, who's given her a great run today. About 14 seconds behind, but he has stayed in the lead lap and just had a good run. And route to his second straight top 10 finish. Dale Earnhardt running in the 11th spot. Behind Kenny Wallace, he's a lap down. Now back up to the leaders. There is Jarrett. Jarrett won this race, finished third in the Southern 500. Jeff Burton finished fourth in this race last year and second in the Southern 500, which of course was won by Jeff Gordon. Jarrett has started to put a little distance on Jeff Gordon, except the last lap, Damien. Gordon picked up about a tenth of a second on him. Jarrett was 300. This time he was 8 and 300. Now they're coming in on some traffic. See how that plays into it. Red no nine, Jared no nine, but he caught him in the corner. That's here at Darlington, that's just a tough place to catch him. Yeah, but Gordon's gonna catch him in this next corner, which is a long corner. Check the speed at the line. Gordon fastest so far. Mayfield third quick. But the 11 car got out of the way, no problem for Jeff Gordon. The four car gets out of the way to go into the corner, no problem there either. They got uh, some other cars that they're going to catch before this race is over. About four of the cars up there in front of them. Gordon, I believe, has picked up a little bit more. Yeah, he's down to 51 hundredths of a second now. He's picked up three tenths in the last couple of laps. And we have less than six laps to go. Mayfield was the fastest that lap. 
with Labonte second and Rusty Wallace third. Couple cars running side by side in front of Jarrett now as they come off of turn four. Boy, Jeff Gordon goes high down in three and four, right up against that wall. But it's working for him. He gets a good run off of that corner. Well, let's see how this traffic plays out. Dennis Spencer gets out of the way. No problem for either of the leaders. Spencer now three laps down in 22nd. Now the next car they'll catch will be Darrell Waltrip. Darrell will go five laps down to the field in 31st position. And here's Rusty Wallace passing Jeff Burton. So Rusty goes to third. Boy, that helps his point lead. Every position he can pick up. Count. Jerry Punch told us on that last pit stop that Jeff Burton and those guys made a chassis adjustment. And it looks like it did not help the, 20, the 99 car. Might have, in fact, hurt it some. Yeah, he's not running the last piece that he was before. And look at Gordon close in on Dale Jarrett here. He's got that high line working coming off of that corner, and he gets a good run. He might be checking it out. So we want to get down into the last lap or two, which we're getting pretty close to that now, Bob. That might be where I can make the pass. You can see the average speed of the race, a little over 127 and a half miles an hour. Well, the 12 and the 99 swap position, so put Mayfield in fourth and Jeff Burton back in fifth. Meanwhile, here is Jeff Gordon continuing to close in on Dale Jarrett with less than three laps. Yeah, but he couldn't get his high line that time because of the lap car that hurt him. Jarrett got by on the inside, which worked best for him, and that let him put a little bit of distance on him. Two to go in the Trans South Financial 400, and there's the interval between first and second. A lot more breathing room for Dale Jarrett this lap than last lap. But another half to go before the checkered flag falls. They're heading toward the white flag here. Look at Jeff go up the banking and right against the wall. White flag is out. One lap to go in the Trans South Financial 400. Jared and Gordon go for the win. Kyle Petty is the slow car right in front of him. Is Jared going to have to back up to try to catch the 44? Doesn't look like it. Kyle gets out of the way. All right, watch it, Gordon. He got to run off that corner. He's going to see it. He'll go up high. No, he's going to try down low. Oh, he's going to go low for the first time. Here he is. In turn four, they touch there briefly, but Dale Jarrett is going to win the Trans South Financial 400 by just a second or so over Jeff Gordon. Jarrett records his 16th career win and 14th on a super speedway. It's his second consecutive victory in this race and his third consecutive top five here at the track. Too tough to take. Dale Jarrett also records the second Ford win of 1998. We'll be back to talk with them in a moment. The winner of the Trans South Financial 400 for 1998 is Dale Jarrett. Here's our McDonald's Winter Circle interview, Dr. Jerry Punch. And DJ here with the family, Natalie Carson, that's Zachary, his son, and uh, Kelly's already come in to give him a big kiss. Uh, DJ, as you give the family a big hug, your congratulations on a great effort. Oh, thanks, Jerry. Uh, crew did a terrific job. Uh, I got to thank the sponsors, Ford Quality Care, Ford Credit, uh, Coca-Cola, Fleetwood RVs, everybody that's put all of this together. We certainly appreciate their help and their efforts. I want to thank God for a safe race and for the abilities he gives this race team. Last few laps, DJ, the 24 car kept getting closer and closer and closer. Yeah, I was, I wore my tires pretty good trying to get by Jeff Burton, and I thought if I could distance myself uh, with Jeff in between Jeff Gordon and I, that'd be okay, but uh, Gordon got by, and I used up a lot of car trying to get by the 99, and uh, it was good fun racing, but, uh, you know, Gordon got under me coming out of four here, and we got together a little bit. I pretty much ran him out of racing room or out of racetrack, and, uh, you know, he just raced hard, and uh, congratulate those guys for a good run, too. You won the halfway money, and I heard you and Robert Yates talking about you're going to make a donation. Yeah, we sure are. Uh, you know, one of the guys that helped put this sport where it is, they got it started. Uh, Tim Flock is not doing very well right now. And uh, Darrell Waltrip had his car painted uh, in memory of Tim Flock today. 
and uh, we're in honor of him. And we're going to take the $10,000 that we wanted halfway and, and uh, give that to Tim Flock and, and his family because uh, all of you out there, if, if you've got any extra cash, uh, this is a person that means a lot to this sport, means a lot to all of us around here. And if you could send a donation to him, we'd appreciate it. Well said. A great tribute uh, to a great man, and, and what a victory celebration. It is Natalie, his daughter's birthday, I think, yesterday, as he holds the family, Natalie Carson, Kelly, and gives another big kiss to Dale Jarrett, the winner of the 42nd Annual Trans-South Financial 400. Let's go to Bill Weber. Well, it has been a leisurely and very enjoyable walk down pit road for Todd Parrott. You successfully defended at Darling. That's pretty awesome, and um, to do it in the style we did it, you know, we, um, we had great pit stops all day, and then there, toward the end, we had uh, one pit stop that got us behind, and it went green. The guys dug deep, and that last pit stop come out behind the uh, 99 car. Awesome driver, Joe you know, Jarrett, and never give up all day. And uh, them Rainbow Warriors, they kept digging all day long, kept that Chevrolet in contention, and um, finished right on our heels. So um, real happy. This is uh, this is the oldest race car we have in our shop. It's the one that um, finished second at uh, Rockingham every time in that last two years. And uh, Davey Allison drove his car, so it's a pretty special win here. Go enjoy Victory Lane. Thank you. Dale Jarrett drove it today to Victory Lane, successfully defending at Darlington. An emotional and exciting win for Robert Yates Racing. It wasn't as an impressive win as it was a year ago. He led 171 laps last year, led 68 this year, but Jarrett has won once again. Lots more coming up from Darlington. Stick around with us. You're watching it, Gordon. This is coming off turn four for the checkered flag. Almost in contact there, not quite. But Jeff Gordon will settle in second spot. He's with John Kernan. Jeff, tell me about the last few laps trying to battle DJ to get the win here. Uh, that was what you call desperate. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it was just great to be uh, to be racing up towards the front again for a win. And uh, all the guys on this DuPont Automotive Fishes Chevrolet today did an awesome job in the pits. And uh, we made a major adjustment in that last caution that brought the car back to life. I'd gotten real loose. And, you know, I didn't think I even had a prayer to, to get up there and race it with DJ. But it uh, uh, looked like uh, some lap track helped a little bit. And uh, some lap traffic didn't help. But uh, then all of a sudden I got a good run going into the last turn into turn three. And uh, I'd hoped he'd slide up. And he did. And I, I just gunned it and tried to get underneath him. But then I stayed in the gas that we would have both wrecked. So uh, I chose wisely. I think Dale will say I chose wisely to, to get out of it. Yeah, I think so, too. It's better to finish second than not finish at all. Jeff Gordon with a second-place finish to DJ. Let's go to Bill Weber. With the Winston Cup points leader, Rusty Wallace, five top fives for you in a great run today. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, without a great crew, I couldn't do it. A bunch of fans pulling for us. It's been really good. Uh, the motors have been excellent. Uh, the car's been handling great. Pit stops have been good. And all we got to do is go home and just work on everything a little bit and try to make it a little better and we can get it up on top. I told him five top fives in a row now. Now it's time to win something. So I'm looking forward to Bristol next week. And Darlington hasn't been one of your best tracks, but you truly cleared another hurdle here today. Well, Darlington, the first race has always been real good for me. And in the second race, it's been good. But the second race, I've crashed and blowed up and a bunch of good, bad things. I mean, to, to go in the record book. But uh, I like Darlington. Uh, I tell you, I chased it all day long. Though I had good time. Different type of tires. I moved air pressure this way, air pressure that way. Had the car doing all kinds of things. But... At the end, his fourth feels great, and uh, he's right there. And that is the next hurdle. Next Sunday afternoon. Here are the top ten in points now. The top three stayed the same. Jeff Gordon gained three positions. Elliott lost one. Labonte lost one. Mark Martin gained one. Jeff Burton gained three positions in the point standings. Bobby Labonte down three, and Jarrett climbed five points in the top of these point standings right now and is tenth as we head to Bristol next Sunday. Back in just a moment. Jarrett is your winner. Here are the unofficial results. The yellow arrows indicate the drivers who led at least one lap. Jeff Burton with the double yellow arrows. That indicates that he led the most laps here this afternoon. He led 195 of the 293. There's 16 through 30. Daryl Waltrip finishing in 30th position. Only four cars out of the race. That sets a record for the least number of DNFs. The previous record was nine in 1997. Here's Jerry.
Well, Jeff Burton, we saw this act yesterday. You dominate the afternoon in the Bush race, and suddenly with 20 laps to go, someone slips by you and takes the win. I mean, two days in a row it's happened to you. Well, it really has. As bad as the car went, you know, we, that's what's so disappointing. We were, a little, you know, we, we pretty much dominated the race, and the car did everything we wanted to do, and then, so we made some little changes, kept making it better all day, and then it just, at the end, it just got real loose real quick, so um, took us out of contention to win. Got to look at the bright side on the right front. Uh, we were better when we, when we were tight. Even when I complained about being too tight, we, that's when we were our best.